Hi there, Dr. Shetland with the Whiplash Group, and I think it's really important for all of our medical doctors, chiropractic physicians, physical therapists, and attorneys out there to understand the 50 years of research that have created the flow chart that explains when and how we're supposed to be treating patients and referring patients over the course of a personal injury case. Now this, uh, this chart can be found in the Physician's Guide to Whiplash and Other Hidden Soft Tissue Injuries, a uh, book available on Amazon. Uh, or you can see the chart here, and we'll zoom in and go over some certain points of this. So important things to understand is along the top, you'll notice that first we're going to do is type the injury. Nobody does, seems to do this except the certified auto accident specialists, which are the chiropractors and medical doctors that are certified and trained in personal injury. This is a specialty, and there are doctors that are very good at this. And then there are other people that are self-proclaimed specialists that do not do this stuff at all. They're just chasing insurance because it's easy money after a car accident. I find that very unethical, and that's why we created the Whiplash Group in the first place, so we can actually pull together certified and specialized trained physicians and attorneys. So you'll notice we've got to type it. Type 1, primarily a rear impact. Type 2, primarily a side impact. Type 3, primarily a frontal impact. Type 4, a rollover, spin out, uh, these kind of things. So we've got to type the injury so we know what's going on. We've got to grade the injury. Type 1. A person doesn't even have to have symptoms. This is important because a lot of times kids or infants, they may not elicit symptoms right away uh, or they're in a car seat and people think, oh, you're fine, we throw away the car seat, but yet we don't treat the precious cargo because they're not showing any symptoms. There are reasons, anatomical reasons, again addressed in the book, why kids might not show symptoms as, as quick or as severely as adults. Get the kids checked, even if they don't have symptoms. A grade one says, hey, look, I have a pulse, I was in a car accident, I don't have any symptoms, but it still allows for a certain amount of care to be proactive or preventative so they don't have long-term problems creep up on, the, on them a couple years from now. So if the research recognizes that for 30 plus years, the insurance companies should be recognizing that, and they will if we document and reference the right research. Grade two, hey, I was in an accident and I do have some symptoms, but I don't have a lot of objective findings. It still allows for a certain amount of visits, and it gives the doctors some grounds for how much care the person should need and the attorneys the right documentation to leverage why that care was allowed. Because let's face it, you adjust somebody five times or you see them more than twice in an auto accident case as a medical doctor or chiropractor, you're like, oh, you overtreated. It's just the knee-jerk response. But when we're using research-based guidelines that are accepted in more than 37 states and nine countries, We've got the leverage to say, this is why we did what we did. This was not over-treating. This was within the research-based guidelines, the accepted guidelines in our state, if you're lucky enough to practice in a state where it's accepted by your association. Boom. So we need to do that. Grade three, by far the most common that we'll see in practice as chiropractic physicians, and if they've gone to the emergency room, they're probably a grade three or more. Most of the time, probably 80% of the time. Very few go to the emergency room if they're having minimal symptoms or having no symptoms. Grade three, there are factors and things that you will learn in a Dr. State's uh, certification program of how to measure on the x-rays. If the measurements show ligament instability, it is an automatic grade three. You cannot unstretch a ligament. That's a permanent impairment. Uh, if there's you know, reduced reflexes or other neurological findings like some cranial nerve stuff or um, <clears throat> grip strength imbalance, these things, boom, 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 bump it up to a grade three. Grade four, if there's any fractures or any disc uh, challenges, it's a grade four. Grade five, if it requires surgery, it's a grade five. And then they come back after uh, uh, eight weeks to, to four months, then they come back to the less aggressive chiropractic physical therapy massage. We need to be typing and grading and staging these injuries with the Croft guidelines if it's a neck injury. If it's a low back injury, then we use the Mercy Guidelines, and that's a whole other topic we'll do at the seminars. If you see the flow, how it goes down, chiropractic physical therapy and massage are the starting point. That's, these are the physical medicines that rehab the tissues that are injured, not just covering up the symptoms with medication. We don't want to just palliate symptoms, or the problems will creep up, the research shows, and by the two, three year mark, they will have chronic problems because they were not rehabbed properly. So this is an important thing for the doctors of chiropractic to understand, to value what they do and to do it right, to communicate properly with physical therapists, massage therapists, and with the MDs. This is very important for the MDs to understand because we can't brush the injuries under the rug with symptoms or, or with pills and potions and not get the chiropractic physical therapy massage. 
Another very important point to make here, folks, chiropractic, physical therapy, massage, all three treat the tissues differently, and none of them is a replacement for the other. They synergistically work so well together, so make sure you have a team treating your auto accident patients. If we don't see improvement by chiropractic, physical therapy, massage, and the allotted time frame by the research, then we bump up to the more aggressive care programs. Injections, manipulation and anesthesia, or heaven forbid, surgery, which is sometimes necessary. But then after surgery, it comes back to chiropractic, physical therapy, massage. There is a time that's necessary for healing, but you don't just do surgery, fuse an area, and then let the above and below areas be neglected for the rest of life. They're a lifetime chiropractic patient as long as they're treated by a qualified or certified or specialized chiropractor. If they just go to Joe, hey, lay down, let me crack you, who doesn't do exams and x-rays, that's dangerous for everybody. So the medical doctors need to know that there's different specialty chiropractics out there. The chiropractors need to know and refer to each other. If you're really good at auto accidents, but you're lousy at nutrition, refer to a, a medical doctor or chiropractor that's good with nutrition. Build those relationships. This is about the patient. Uh, it's not about chasing insurance. Please treat the patient properly and the right income will come. And when you do it right and document it right, the lawyers are so grateful because they actually have tools to leverage the case for the client. I'm Dr. Shetland. Thanks for tuning in to this special message for our members, understanding the flow chart and the research from the 50s to current on proper treatment for our patients that have been injured. Thanks.